How do we engage in politics while staying Christ-centered? Let's talk about it right now. Guys, welcome back to the front row. I'm once again joined with Jim, Andy, and Gina. Thanks for being here, guys. Y'all just, you're killing it. This has been fun. <laughs> so we are having a conversation. I wanted to title this one, Do Christians Have to Be Republican? Ah. Just for the hot mm. button. Nice. But it's a politics conversation yeah. because it's more about just like what that means and what that looks like. Um, and it's interesting because our country itself is super partisan. Like it feels like more so than ever, right? The divide is wide. And it is, you can't be up the middle on anything. You have to choose either which side. And one side is the good and evil, depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and that has also infected church. And the church has become deeply involved in politics and political conversations. So my first question would be is, why has the church become so deeply embedded into like political conversations um, and a part of that? Yeah, I think there's a misnomer that America is a Christian nation that it was mm. born as a Christian nation and that Christians therefore uh, owned this country and that if you, um, if you, if, if government or uh, Americans try to practice uh, freedom of religion, mm. that that's taken away. And we do, we do feel lost because uh, while the country was not necessarily a Christian nation, it certainly was a monotheistic one. Mm. So even our documents, we hold these truths, you know, they're all endowed by their creator, not mm. creators. So there was a monotheistic impulse in the formation of our country. Mm. Um, and that's the, the uh, I don't know, the, it's the worst thing that could have happened to the church. <laughs> so now we feel a sense of loss if that gets taken from us. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, wait, we, we, you know, we own this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it, I think there's a lot of confusion about that. There's no yeah. such thing as a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And this country wasn't trying to be a Christian nation, but also it wasn't pursuing freedom from religion. It was just trying to pursue freedom of religion. So there wouldn't be a sure. state religion everybody right. had, to, uh, had to participate in. Mm. So I think there's lots of historical confusion about that, where that came from. Mm. And so, but I do think Christians feel a sense of loss. Mm. Ten Commandments used to hang in the courthouse. We used to pray in school. You know, I grew up in Texas, and before every football <laughs> game, you're down on a knee and praying the Lord's Prayer as a right. team. Wow. So a lot of these uh, things were woven into mm -hmm. our culture. Texas Blue Laws, you couldn't, you couldn't buy certain things on Sunday because yeah. that was the Lord's Day. So mm. liquor stores were closed. And, um, and so we had a lot of cultural things that made us believe this is a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And so now as we lose those, we feel this sense of loss, and we're fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. makes us want to roll up our sleeves and fight mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for something that was never real in the first place. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then so attached to the political party that's fighting for us, is, would that be the next? I think so. I had a, I had a guy in Montana. He, he was, man, he, really, <laughs> really conservative, as Montanans can, can that. be. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> and, uh, I would have seen Montana. We're, we're in his truck one day, and I asked him, hey, do you think it's possible to be a Christian and a Democrat? <laughs> <laughs> and he thought for like two and a half minutes, and then he said this, I would have to concede that that is theoretically possible. Uh, <laughs> okay, man. Awesome. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, too, because now in the social media world, too, is uh, your, the opinions and the stances are so widespread. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of you need to decide what you think about this thing now. Mm -hmm. And you have to pick a side. Um, and it's easy to justify, no, this is the more Christ-centered side mm -hmm. because of these things. I remember having a whole conversation with people back in Colorado. It was two friends of mine, one Republican, one Democrat. And they were like, I just, I can never vote Democrat because of mm -hmm. what Christ calls me to. And they're like, that's why I'm a Democrat right. because of Christ. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. why I can't vote Republican. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. you're looking at two different issues and you're going this way. You're mm -hmm. not actually connecting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Mm -hmm. And if your only experience is in white middle class churches, mm. you don't yeah. meet many Democrats. Right. Yeah. And I remember the first time I got involved in any kind of social justice, we got involved serving the inner city poor in Denver. Mm. And when I started doing that and working among nonprofits there and working among immigrant families and working among uh, poor ethnic families, mm. I couldn't find a Republican anywhere. Mm. Mm. And Republicans get mad at me when I say this, but I'm telling you, I couldn't find one anywhere. Mm -hmm. They were all Democrats. And that was the first time I met a flood of Democrat Christians, mm -hmm. where that was the overwhelming majority in that context. The thing that's interesting is Jesus calls us 
and, and the historical church calls us to, to really kind of like, you could even say four categories of things. Uh, ethnic diversity. Christianity was the first religion in the history of the world mm -hmm. that embraced ethnic uh, uh, diversity. Mm. Because before that, every nation had its own gods. Mm -hmm. And so they were very monochromatic. Right. But Christianity said, no, we have a God of the whole world. Right. He's the God who made everyone. Mm -hmm. So we, it was a, a racial uh, integration. Mm -hmm. um, caring for the poor. Mm -hmm. We're instructed relentlessly mm -hmm. in the scriptures to care for the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, advocacy for human life, you know, pro-life. Mm -hmm. That is a clearly Bible stance to believe in the value, the sovereignty over mm -hmm. the birth in the womb and life. And then... Um, uh, purity, sexual mm -hmm. purity, uh, family values, you know, these are certainly advocated in the scriptures. What you have is you have the Democrats on the first two and the, yeah. and the Republicans on the second two. Mm -hmm. right. And that's why they would say, well, I'm a Democrat precisely for these reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Republicans don't care about the poor and they mm -hmm. don't care about racial reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Or Republicans say, well, I'm a Republican because you guys don't care about advocacy of human life yeah. Yeah. and you don't care, you know, about the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why Christians really have to be politically homeless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We and have to care about all of those issues. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. a great, I'm glad you brought that term up because I think it'd be good for us to define that and kind of explain what that means because I think that's fairly new for some people mm -hmm. is this idea of being politically homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, so can we, let, let's talk a little bit more about that. What does that mean? What is that about? Yeah, what does that yeah. mean to you guys? I think politically homeless, it, that's been a really freeing term for me. Thinking mm. through po the political lens, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but you have so many different topics from the economy to foreign policy to he right to life and all these things, racial reconciliation. It's crazy to think we have two parties and we're supposed to fit neatly within one <laughs> yeah. category. Yeah. Yeah. With millions of topics, we have right. over 300 million people in our country. Right. And, and I've done it before where I hear a topic that I'm not sure what I believe about it. Mm. And my default, and it shouldn't be this way, is, well, what does my political party believe about mm. that? Mm. And that's the fault, I think, the intellectual yeah. fault of, I'm not going to think for myself, I'm going to default to what this group or this group thinks. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I think politically homeless, I heard somebody say the other day as Christians, like, we're exiles in Babylon. Mm. We, we don't mm. fit neatly in whatever category. Our citizenship is even of another place. Yeah, right. it's another place. We're just passing through. So I love my country, and I'm going to mm. serve my country to the best ability. But to do that, I can't just join a tribe and hate mm -hmm. another tribe I have to say I'm up for this uh, issue and this issue and this issue wherever Jesus is going to lead me it could be true yeah. that to, and this would be very controversial <laughs> it could be true that to be a hardcore partisan person is to deny Jesus mm. there's no way Jesus mm -hmm. would be one party because yeah. of these blending of values mm -hmm. that don't get met by one party mm -hmm. yeah and so uh that's a terrifying thing to say out loud and admit because and i'm glad you said it <laughs> <laughs> but uh but it's the thing is you have these values that guide you and you become i've talked to some people this week who are very democrat liberal mm -hmm. thinkers non-believers and they admitted they are one issue voters. One of them was the environment. I'm a one issue voter. I vote mm -hmm. on the environment. Mm -hmm. The other one said, I'm a one issue voter and I vote on gay and lesbian G LGBTQ rights. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, well, that's what the, so many Christians have become one issue voters. It's mm -hmm. pro life or it's pro family mm -hmm. or it's the economy. Yeah. Um, and so Jesus would certainly not be a one issue voter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fascinating to even talk about would he go to the polls and what would that look like? I right. can't even yeah. get my brain around yeah. that. Right. Uh, it's a really interesting deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is so human nature to want to label ourselves as one thing. We want mm -hmm. it. We feel mm -hmm. very comfortable living in one camp. Yeah. It's you know our in group, and that's the out group. And it is so. What Jesus said and what he established is so. It's interesting how countercultural it continues to be. It was countercultural then. I mean, mm -hmm. you think about the Jews and the Sumerians and the Roman. You know, and it it was all. It was, yeah, the, you had your in-group, and it continues to be that way today. I mean, mm. there's nothing new under the sun, right? We continue yeah. to repeat mm -hmm. the same patterns no matter what the group is, no matter, yeah. you know, what the country is. It's this right. age-old mm -hmm. problem we have. Yeah. And if you are not offended by Jesus, then you're not hearing him. Mm -hmm. I don't care what party you are. If he's not confronting you in some arena of your thinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you don't understand him. Right. Yeah. You're right. tuning him out, and you're, you're interpreting him. Uh, passively when he's not passive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing to me is both parties, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
neither party wakes up in the morning thinking, how can I destroy human lives and ruin <laughs> yeah, this country? Yeah. <laughs> but the other party thinks that's exactly what yeah, that party's yeah, doing. Yeah. They are losing sleep trying to figure out how to ruin yeah. lives and destroy our country. <laughs> yeah. Well, that already we're at an impasse because that's not what they're doing. Yeah. Both parties want uh, uh, humans to flourish. They mm -hmm. want our country to prosper. They want peace and prosperity and joy and, mm -hmm. and success. They just go about it completely differently. Yeah. And so even just to admit that to each other and go, hey, I think we might want the same things yeah. here in, in yeah. terms of the outcomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about how we achieve them. Right. Now we can have a real conversation yeah. instead of me demonizing you and saying, you're trying to ruin the country. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, yeah. you're trying to destroy lives. Right. Yeah. So continuing this conversation on then, so Oikos focused um, with the people around you, mm -hmm. like how mm -hmm. do we engage and make impact with these people who probably disagree with this. I mm -hmm. doubt if your whole Oikos is just your party, you're probably not paying enough attention. Um, or that's not actually your Oikos, I don't know. But how do we work with that and then also st stay focused on Christ first mm -hmm. and make that the mm -hmm. most important thing about what we're doing? Mm -hmm. I think mindfulness of your Oikos is really important. It turns out, for example, that your Oikos could be entirely one party. Mm -hmm. Because I was reading a, some research lately, Americans are more politically segregated geographically than they are ethnically segregated. Wow. So you have entire segments of cities that are Republicans, conservatives, wow. or liberals. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I live in a neighborhood that is very conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it Trump country for fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and neighbors talk loud about their conservative views yeah. because they assume everybody agrees with them. Mm -hmm. And so it could be that your circle is so monochromatic politically that sure. you don't know a Democrat. You sure. don't know a Republican. So that is possible. And I think the mindfulness to just come to terms with that mm. is helpful mm -hmm. because then I realize how I'm in an echo chamber and I'm not hearing voices yeah. that I might should listen to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In thinking about this conversation, I was thinking about that verse from Micah. Um, what does the Lord desire for us but mm -hmm. to do justice, mm -hmm. love mercy, and walk humbly? Mm -hmm. And I think especially for those in our oikos who are believers but maybe are in a different political camp than us, mm -hmm. maybe part of it is just finding that equal ground, coming back to, okay, can we agree? Mm -hmm. This is the one of the most important things. you know. And those four things you brought up, mm -hmm. Jim, can we, you know, find common ground on this? But also, what has God specifically called us to? Mm -hmm. Well, he laid it out pretty plainly in his yeah. word, you know. Yeah. We can disagree. We can finesse. We can, you mm. know, go back and forth. But yeah. at the end of the day, what are those core beliefs we have? What are, you know, what is fundamentally important? Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. I think there's a principle I, I'm really trying to incorporate in my life, and I'm still not very good at it. But it is to listen well. Mm. And this one rule, you know, seek to fully understand mm -hmm. before you seek to be understood. Mm -hmm. So ask lots of questions. Yeah. How do you see that? So you mean this? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? And to me, when I get two people who can't even talk to each other because they're so opposed, mm -hmm. I try to get each of them to articulate the other person's view as well as they can. Mm. And once you can do that, once you can articulate your opponent's view mm -hmm. as well as they can yeah. and yeah. as persuasively as they can, yeah. Now you understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now move on to expressing your own view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we could do that, we could make so much ground because right. we don't seek to understand. We seek to overthrow or to persuade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, good. that's powerful. So for all you guys watching, thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, go love your oikos and know this, that it's Christ first. You are to be an ambassador of him, to walk humbly and uh, show who he is before anything else. So go impact your front row. And we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.